finally, we are going to move into some Mavericks territory here. I know some of you are probably eager to see this. I know that I'm eager to see it for sure. We have the pending return. Impending, not pending as in waiting. Impending return of Kristaps Porzingis tonight. Take two, because last time they told us for sure he was playing... They even told us in the press conference right before the game that he was playing. And then he went through warm-ups and they were like, oh, damn. He says his knee is a little sore. Sit him out. Sit him out and have him miss a couple more games. And then we'll have a four-day break before this Clippers game tonight. Well, here we are now. He's gone through a full day of practice Sunday. Uh, yeah, Sunday and Monday. He's had no other issues in his knee beyond that for beyond that day. So the Mavericks say he is ready. After 10 games, Kristaps Porzingis returns to the mix for Dallas. This is significant because the Mavericks offense, while the offense on one hand has actually taken a little bit of a tick upward in the right direction, the defense has certainly dropped down a bit and that has left the team in a little bit of a bind, frankly, because... Yeah, they need his interior defense. They are getting killed on points in the paint. And while it's funny that I mention that because that immediately suggests that I have that stat in front of me, points in the paint allowed per games in his 10 games out, I don't. So it's a bad thing to mention because I can't then back it up. But you know, you know, you know, you know, we've been watching, we know. But the team, this is, comes from uh, Nick Engstad on Twitter. The Mavericks during the 10 games before, or sorry, the Mavericks before Porzingis left with injury. Their offensive rating was 115 points, point, 115.4 points per 100 possessions. Since then, it's actually up 118.6. <gasps> Are they better? No, because the defensive rating went from 107.7 to 113.9. So they improved by three points, not even just over, excuse me, 3.2 points better offensively, six plus points worse. They are worse without him in that regard. Additionally, uh, additionally, their interior defense has been trash. They've not been mightily struggling in the rebounding department, but have struggled enough that you know that they need they need to have him there to sure that whole operation up because they they're not good enough in that capacity. Their interior defense is not good enough without him. Now, Maxi has stepped up and played very nicely, as ESPN even pointed out here, uh, as they talk about Maxi in the Maverick and KP's absence, the Mavericks are six and four, and ESPN even highlights this as they do their power rankings. They had the Mavericks at ninth overall, up from ten the week before, and they point out the Mavericks six and four in this stretch uh, can thank Maxi quite a bit during that. In that stretch of ten games, he is twelve point three points on fifty one point three percent shooting from the floor. And 43.9% from three. 5.7 boards, 1.6 blocks per game for Maxi in KP's absence. Now, that's very nice. Like, legitimately, that is very nice. But 5.7 boards is not going to make us forget about KP, who's averaging over nine boards per game. And just because Maxi's getting 1.6 blocks per game, that's nice. That's probably about where KP is sitting. I haven't looked at KP's down... Uh, down to the minute stats to see where he is on blocks per game right now. But I know earlier this season he was hovering around two. So yeah, it it's nice that Maxi has done what he's done, especially the scoring and the three-point shooting. But we need better interior defense. So adding another guy that can block shots helps. Adding another guy who can rebound, let alone one who rebounds at almost twice the clip of what Maxi's been doing. That helps. And just a guy who can continue to stretch the floor, although Maxi has done that very well for the Mavericks, particularly shooting those corner threes in the last few weeks. They need to continue building on this. The team is on a roll right now. We've moved up to fifth in the Western Conference, a full game ahead of the Rockets as they've had a little bit of a skid. But our work is not done. The last time we faced the Clippers, we frankly got outclassed. The... Length and athleticism they threw at Luka on the perimeter and the other players, too, really bothered them. But Luka, 22 points in that game. I think he had to get 12 of those at the free throw line. Free throws have been very iffy for Luka in the last week or so. So there is a lot, there's a lot to consider in this element for Dallas. 
we're going to have to see how they can adapt because while the Clippers, they're not... The Clippers are kind of going about the NBA season, not lackadaisically, but they're not sweating losses here and there. Like, their record isn't bad, but you see them losing more often than you would expect for a team that has the kind of talent they have, let alone the kind of defensive talent that they have. And yet the Clippers currently sit, what, I think they're third in the West? Clippers are fourth in the West. The Jazz are third, but they're basically the same record. The Clippers are 30 and 13. And it's weird because it seems like more often than not, which I, not literally more often than not, but it seems like you see a fairly regular streak uh, where final scores come down to the end of the night and you look through it and you're like, oh, wow, the Clippers lost that game. Oh, wow, they lost that game. I just think it's a matter of they're, they're not playing a lot of Kawhi and Paul George together. Paul George has been dealing with some injuries as well. And I think they're good enough that they know hey, man, we can kind of go through this at 75%, and once playoffs come around, we can turn it on just like that. They probably can, but we also saw when they played Dallas last time, you could tell by their statements before the game, they were ready to try and take on the Luka hype. And yeah, I mean, Luka got 22 points, and I don't remember what his rebounds and assists were in the game, but they really made him work for it. So it's like they didn't shut him down. It certainly wasn't his worst points production of the of the season. But at the very least, they they made it difficult for him. And they took the challenge, accepted it, and largely accomplished what they wanted to do. So I'm interested to see how, A, Luca responds. They've had a few days now of rest. B, Although I don't expect KP to have heavy minutes tonight, I'm curious to see how he looks. I don't want him just camped out shooting threes. I want to see, is he still going to be willing to pump fake and attack the basket? Because, again, it's his right knee. This is not the left knee. I know when I talked about him and uh, the update on him after his previous, you know, what's going on when it was like, oh, he's going to play. Nope, never mind. He's not going to play. When I talked about that, there was a lot of kind of negative pushback I kind of felt, honestly, um, not a lot, I guess, but more than usual in these podcasts. And I didn't say anything in it that wasn't the factual, the factual presentation of it that was presented. And even people who thought I was panicking, I said, there's concern. Concern is not the same thing as panic. Even as I rated it on a scale of one to 10, I said a four and a half out of 10. And I said, the only way I would push closer to a 10 would be if he missed two or three or whatever weeks beyond that, and we kept having little information. Everything we've heard since then suggests he's in a good place, he's ready to go, and even with them being extra cautious, they're good to roll him out there now. So if that's the case, no sweat, no concern. Like, let's see how he looks. Let's see how long it takes him to reintegrate a little bit. I don't want him just camped out shooting threes. I know the mid-range hasn't been great for him this year, um, but... We're going to have to see what he looks like and how it affects the flow of the offense because it would not surprise me in the least, especially in a matchup like this, for him to struggle a little bit against a team like the Clippers and for him to struggle for two or three games just to kind of try to reintegrate himself into the flow of the offense and everything. So we'll see. That's the fun of all of this. But that's going to do it for the time in this episode, guys. Uh, I will be doing a post-game show tonight after the game, uh, despite homework i will find a way to make that all work um who needs sleep right sleep is for the week but thank you for tuning in don't forget to like this video leave a comment below subscribe to the dallas prospect check out the shirts on represent.com we have just unleashed our new road warriors t-shirts in fact i'm going to splash them up on the screen right here as i talk about this uh just unleashed the new road warrior t-shirts check all that out but above all remember Every legend was once a prospect. Peace.